I want to believe that uh, pageants are more of problems than anything. Mm-hmm. They go beyond beauty. They go beyond uh, modeling, swimming costume, and the 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 run. What what did you call this? The ramp. Mm. But now it's more about what you do for the community, the impact that you bring, yeah. the work that you do for the community. And for me, that is what um, was more important for me. For entering into a pageant, intentionally so, and intentionally g- going for the crowd. Mm. And what was um, even more interesting was that, you can see my weight, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we entered with women, mm. and we were competing with women of all shapes, of all color. And mm. it was amazing because for me, I wanted to define stereotypes to mm-hmm. just because uh, as a pastor, you know, you can imagine for a church girl. I was just about to comment on that. I'm like, yeah. hmm, what an unpopular <laughs> decision as exactly. a pastor to take. Yeah, as a pastor, I had to do it for the church girls and just to make them realize that um, you can have influence in certain spaces, mm. and then for you to have that influence, you need to go into those spaces intentionally. And you make it work. And for me, it was very important that I win it. Mm. So that uh, defying stereotypes, in action. Mm. And yeah, we win this. So yeah, that's what happened. And I'm crowned. The crown. <laughs> so here's, 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 here's what I want to find out from you, Mr. <laughs> um, Lahori, is that when she came to you with a decision, um, how difficult or how easy was it for you to support it and, and let her have her way? Look, um, we are now going for our eighth year in marriage. In three months' time, we'll be eight years together in marriage. So, I've grown That's to amazing. Yeah, thank That's you. an I've, amazing I've grown milestone. to know her, and then I also, to a point whereby I know that if she puts her mind, her mind into something, she's mm. surely going to uh, give it her all. So, when mm. she said she wanted to enter this thing, I was not skeptical or anything. Mm. I know that if she wants to do it, she will win it. You know, because whenever she goes into something, I knew that she gives it her all. So I, I truly supported her because I knew that if she said she wanted to do it, it means she's ready to commit all the way. Interesting you say, because you also wrote a book, um, Who Wears the Pants? And uh, I believe it was addressing some of the stereotypical mentalities yeah. in society, particularly um, on the male side of things, to say... Um, um, if you don't have the final say, then it's not okaying it. And can you just maybe quote some of the key things that you address from that book that could actually help transform a whole lot of mindsets of a whole lot of men who believe that a wife who is a pastor and maybe who does not look a perfect image, kind of a, you know, picture perfect, modeling, whatnot, um, and, and all that. I mean, how you, you just touched on how easy, and the element I'm picking up from you is that not only do you trust her as a person, you trust even the decisions that she makes because they are made for the benefit of both of you and her and the family yeah, at large yeah. as well, even the ministry that you guys are leading. Okay. So um, a typical man who is so obsessed about, you know, having the final say, having the power and all of that, how can you appeal to such a man? Um, look, uh, I, when I wrote the book, I, I wanted to address such a mindset mm. that... Um, Things have changed, and with things changing, we we were in a situation whereby our generation is faced with um, depression regarding marriages. Mm. Why? Because roles in marriages have changed, you know. So the issue about the book, who has the pens? The question is directed to to my generation that mm. with information that you have grown knowing regarding marriage mm. and as a man being the head and everything and all that. How is that now applicable to you as a man today mm. in, in a world whereby women are, are no longer slaves? Women are now like uh, allowed to, as if I were to quote uh, from our uh, recent Miss Universe, women are allowed, literally not even allowed. They've entered into spaces and they're owning such spaces, as she says, you understand? Mm. So as a man, how do you handle that as a man and in our generation? So yeah. the book says, who has the pants now? So who has the pants? It's not a fight for leadership or headship. Mm. It's simply saying um, we are together in this and wearing the pants is all about waking so that the marriage can uh, the, the marriage can actually progress and yield mm. fruits, mm. you understand? Mm. So for me, regarding my wife's uh, decision and all that, for me it was like... Um, understood my role as a husband mm. that uh, entering pageants had, had nothing to do with me it was her choice mm. it's what she loves she wanted to do that 
So my 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 my, my business with it was to be a husband. A husband mm. I had to support her mm. in that regard. You understand? Mm. It is not about one person in a, in marriage. It's not about I know traditionally what works for you best. Traditionally they will say us. you are the one who comes mm. with the vision. You are the man. You mm-hmm. give direction. You choose what she must do. What she must not. I mean that that doesn't work anymore. That doesn't apply anymore. If what she wants to do is not going to harm us, but it, in fact is going to help us as a couple. Why not give her the lead? So who has the pens? It's all about that. There are certain areas in marriage whereby your wife can actually know better than you as a man. Mabula, I remember at some point you 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 had, I think after you had your second child, yeah, yeah. Um, you used to post a lot on Facebook about yeah. um, some of the postnatal um, mm-hmm. depression disorders that you had to go mm-hmm. through as a woman. Mm-hmm. And, and can you just maybe take us through that before we actually even link that with your ultimate yes. decision to actually, you know, go for the yeah, crown. Yeah. Look, I noticed that, look, pregnancy is very risky, right? Mm. And then we go in and we expect, especially when you go for the second one. Mm. Okay, with my first, for me, everything was like smooth sailing. It was great. That's it was the excitement of being a new mom. You know, sort of things, yeah. and it was an emergency C-section, but we, we came out all right, no pains, nothing. All the people, the things that people were talking about, I did not experience. Now, with the second one, it became difficult because all of a sudden I can't do this, I can't do that, you know? Mm. Things were a bit difficult because my expectation was like, it's, it's going to be like the first like one, the first you know? One, yeah. And then now it was different. And that was a bit difficult for me because I did not understand. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't take it because... Yeah, first day, I'm that girl who just want to do stuff for myself. And Go it. get her. So then you know, <laughs> <laughs> So now I couldn't do a lot of things and I needed more help, which sometimes I struggled to say, please do one, two, three for me, because I felt, well, but I can do this, mm. and now I can't. So it was very difficult for me to adjust and get, because I, I felt like my life was getting out of my hands, you mm. know, mm. because I can't do things that I really wanted to do. And I felt, well, how do we help one another? Mm. How, do we, how do I get out of this and still become me, you know? Mm. And that's why I started talking about it, and just Saying because I felt I was falling into depression, mm-hmm. but at the same time, like I can't just go in. Mm. It's enough, like because I I felt like I am seeing myself going in it. I'm 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 I'm, mm. I'm dr- drowning. But and then I had to come and help ask for help. Because sometimes you know we do not ask for help, and also because when people know you are you are a strong person, mm. it's difficult mm. for you to now show weakness. Yeah. So I think for me. Uh, it was uh, that kind of a thing to say, mm. I can't show weakness, then you're struggling to get help. And I think that's why a lot of people go through postnatal de- depression because it's just difficult dealing with a baby. Mm. And now you have to deal with a baby, and if you don't have support, it becomes even more difficult. So, yeah, I went through all that, and that's what really got me to just get up and say, let's. Let's make change. Let's do something Let's about it. So, yeah. so when you when I, I'd like to believe that that experience on its own also exposed you to other women who have yes. who share in the same struggle and all that. Yes. And what are some of the most common things that we should look out to, look out for, yes. especially when somebody has just given birth? Um, mm-hmm. Some of the most mild common symptoms that one might mm-hmm. actually ov- not not necessarily ignore. They would yeah. overlook because. There's not much education around that. I mean, uh-huh. when we take it back to our societal expectations of yes. what right. mothering is supposed to be, uh-huh. um, when we trace it back to when our mothers were were having us, yes. you know, yes. some 30 years or so yeah. ago, yeah. Um, there wasn't a lot of interest paid much yes. on a woman who just given birth yes. because yeah. you, you were just expected to you just, just run. Make it work, yeah. you know, make it work. And what are some of the most mild conversations and, and mm. some of the symptoms that you'd pick up in other women yeah. and some of this alarming and also not so very alarming um, cases that you would, you'd be exposed to? I think what we, what is more important is being real. Mm. You know? Being real to the times that we live in and being real to the, the situations or setups that we have. Mm. Because sometimes it's issues of setups that we have. And issues of expectations, like mm-hmm. you, you've been saying. So sometimes the expectation is that you you are supposed to just get this, wing you know, it. and Make then it work. yeah, wing it, you know. And then we then want to prove a point to say, look, I can wing this, even when you see that you're struggling. 
So being real, firstly as a mom, to yourself. Because some people are not real to themselves because they want to prove a point based on expectations. So now, I feel like I'm then bullied mm. by the expectations and then they want to now respond to the bullying by trying to prove a point that mm. I can do this. So then you don't, sometimes people don't, you, you don't even open a space for help. I think that's what happens to a lot of moms. Mm. Some have assistance, mm. but they don't have, they don't open the door for mm. that assistance because they're trying to prove a point of, mm. okay, you expect me to do this, I can prove it to you that I can do it. Mm -hmm. So some, it's, they don't help, help at all. So they just have to wing it mm. without any help. So it's a bit um, tricky depending on situations, like I say. And some, it's also expectations from, for example, um, some are living with their in-laws, right? Mm. And the in-laws just expect you to like drop the baby and this is what you can do. You must start running. Mm. And then you also don't want to disappoint or mm. you also mm. still mm. want to prove a point to say, look, I, I can this. do this, you know? Mm. And then uh, because sometimes also it's issues of how did you give birth? To mm. some, you give birth through C-section, you're not a mom enough, you are not strong enough. Mm. So that also mm. plays a role because you are trying to prove to someone that I am a mom enough by trying to take care of things that are, you know, you see when a young pal. Yeah. But you're trying to say, look, I might have given birth this way, but I can do this. Interesting you say that. So women that, so there's, a, there's also a stereotypical mentality yes. around the how you, how give, you birth give birth part yeah. of it. Yeah. You know, ah, so, so it, if you didn't push, you're not strong enough. You're not mum enough to some. So some, if you're not content with, look, we have a baby after all. Mm. How the baby came doesn't really matter. To, to some, it matters. And then because some, we really want to give birth naturally. And when that doesn't happen, also becomes a problem. Because psychologically, you are not prepared for another alternative mm. of giving birth. So now psychologically, you must deal with the fact that I did not give birth the way I wanted to. And the, 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 the situations that comes with that, the consequences that comes with that. Because sometimes then you are sicker mm. than you thought you would be. Because when you give birth naturally, you heal quicker. With C-section, it takes time. Mm. So then you have to deal with that to say, prepare yourself to be okay. Prepare yourself to deal with a child. And children come with so many things. They're unpredictable. You might find out you want to breastfeed and you can't breastfeed. Mm. And that becomes a problem to some moms because, as well for me, I didn't have, you know when you have big boobs, but your boobs don't have milk, <laughs> and you love breastfeeding? <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing, you know, yeah. because you, you, I love breastfeeding so much, and my boobs did not have enough milk, and that was very stressful for me. Because this is what I really wanted to do. And I feel like I can't give my baby it's, the it's best. It's taking away the mummy feeling exactly. from me. Exactly. Yeah. And you find someone who, who like mil milk is just flowing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so then also some of them make you feel like, no, you are not breastfeeding enough. That's why you don't have enough milk. And that time you're thinking, I'm taking all the supplements that people can, like the, mm. all the supplements in the store. I go and buy them. All the mixtures, I go and buy all the teas, I'm there. And this thing is not, still not working. So dealing with babies then becomes a bit more difficult and we, we struggle. We just struggle. And the fact that we don't have safe spaces to co talk about these things, to be vulnerable actually. Because mm. for me, vulner vulnerability does not mean you are weak. Mm -mm. But it says you're getting the help that you need. That you so need. we don't want to be vulnerable amongst ourselves. And that's why we are unable to get help. Okay. Yeah. So, when you hear, say, all these things, um, 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 and you also tap into some of the, the wisdom that you shared in your book, um, Who Was the Pants, um, a whole lot of women actually are trapped in that corner because there is no availability of men to the aid, you know. And and how how easy has it been for you? Okay, maybe just also share with us how that personally made you feel um, when you had to sometimes step in and almost be like the mummy, you know, to, to some of the kids. As a, as a man who, a black man particularly, you know, we, there, there are stereotypes around that. There are things that uh, we were exposed to that make us either feel more or less manly. You know, um, how important is it for a 21st century man to step up in a family setting? 
Um, it is, it is, I think it's, it's, the, it's, the, uh, it's the most key thing that is needed in our generation, that uh, fathers, particularly black fathers, to be available, not only available in terms of um, supporting financial, or mm. I'm available, I'm in the house. Whatever happens, just know that, that I'm in the house. But actually, take charge and also be active in raising your kids, mm. not only when they are maybe three or when they are going to school, but the moment they are, the moment they are born. I mean, you, uh, from the moment your child is born, you must be able to. If if the mom, the hands mom, on deck. Yes, if the mom can uh, can be there to 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 bath the kids, you must be able to do that. Change diapers, you must be able to do that from the first day. You understand? Mm. So, those are some of the things. Uh, I mean, for us personally, for me, um, I re I was really looking forward to being a dad. So mm. I I was I was there. I was hands on from the first day. Um, I mean, you can name all, all, all those things of raising a child, everything you can name, I've done it, I'm doing it. I mean, I'm more attached to, 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 to our two boys, you know, than ever. And even today, I mean, if I'm even worried, if I have to leave and I'm not going to spend the, I mean, maybe a day or two away from home, I'm worried. How is the child going to go? How, how is my firstborn going to go to school? How's the little one? You understand? Because I, I want to be the one who does that. You understand? I want to be yeah. available to do that. So for me, I think the key thing in our generation is that fathers must be not only available by being in the house or financially, but they must be they must participate. They must be able to not necessarily help. It is not helping. It is actually parenting. You understand? That's what you, you that's the mentality to. that yes. I'm only helping you. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm like you. You saying to your to pinche or your phone and let me do the can't I'm babysitting. Who's this child are you babysitting? <laughs> you parenting. <laughs> yes. Not we the unfathering yeah. ones are this babysitters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's important also because remember, present uh, parents help in actually shaping the mind and yeah. uh, in the development of the minds of mm -hmm. of, of, of our children. Whatever your child is learning going to become is uh, will be influenced by the voices mm -hmm. that he or she hears regularly. Mm. So if you only come, you are like a salary, you only come once a month, payday, that's when you are a father. You are able to say, let's go and buy toys, let's go out. You understand? Mm. Who's talking to your child for the rest of the 29 days or 30 days? Who's talking to your child every day? Who's mm. there for your child when it's right? And the other thing, bonding with your, with your kids mm -hmm. is with those little moments like bathing the kids, changing diapers, those, I mean, putting your child to sleep, those are the bonding. Uh, hence, when we grew up, we were afraid of our our, our fathers, if you can, re if you, if you can recall. Yeah. Our generation, when we grew up, we were afraid of our fathers. We can't even converse with them. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. We only bonded with our mothers because they, they were, they were more appealing and more approachable. Because they were involved. Yeah. So also keeping in mind that history played a role in most of the men that we currently have, um, in as far as what being a man is deemed to be in, within a societal setting. Um, we cannot in, in ignore the fact that there are certain systems that actually previously took place mm -hmm. that actually some of the determinants that then the defects that we're dealing with in our current generation emanate as a result of that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a certain understanding of what being a man looks like. Um, how would you appeal to a man who is um, power-driven and wants to pass or you know, throw his weight around to be felt in a family setting that, you know, there is another different way that if you try, it will actually not even require much effort. It will actually put you at a place of being respected and not feared and thus paving a way of you and the children actually having to come to some form of consensus in as far as um, what are the activities and the the happenings in the, in the family setting. You, a better way basically that is, that is more appealing that has more benefits than it would have detriments um, one of the most tried and tested methods which I've seen uh, yielding fruits time and again is the role model role model kind of a method mm. men uh, learn better and learn more from a role model than from literally when you're giving them a lecture if you mm. give them a lecture about how to be a father how to do one two, they don't take you serious but men listen to those people that they actually look up to. Understand? So if a man, like for instance, uh, growing up as a young man, some 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 men who are actually in jobs, they are likely going to, to look uh, to look up to their bosses. If somebody idolizes his boss based on uh, from the professional point of view, whatever his boss does, he thinks that is the ultimate. If somebody growing up uh, idolizes an uncle at home, the uncle who has made it in life, so. 
as a young man, whatever the angle does, he, he he's most likely going to follow suit. So mm. what we need is actually we need role models. Mm. We need uh, young, actually black black men who are role models to, to this generation. Mm. Everything that is happening with our boys being involved in addictions and all these things is because they lack role models. There's an absence of so that, yeah. men learn better when when they look up to uh, another man. Who's so they learn better by sight, not by hearing. True, true. Mm. Right. Th- that's 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 true for men. So what we are looking, especially if you go back to our upbringings, you go back to our townships, our villages, we are lacking role models. You, you, if, 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 if a boy is coming from a family whereby everyone is doing as they please, he's, he's, likely also not, he's likely also to follow suit. Hence, you see, if you check the statistics of crime, also if you check the criminals, most of them, most of them are coming from backgrounds whereby the family situation is not okay. Mm. So why, why? Because the boys lacked role models. So what we need to do, especially as uh, the current fathers, we need to go back and become role models to the young boys. We need to go back. So if, if uh, is this uh, regarding your question, regarding another man who's actually coming from such a background, I think we need to open up. It's difficult. My wife always encourages me. She always says to me, you must encourage men to talk. You must encourage. Uh, and I tell her that, you know, it's not easy for men to sit down and say, okay, let's talk about our feelings. It's not. It, it's mm. not easy. You understand? But we need to find common grounds. What is it that joy, what is it that unite men? Mm-hmm. Issues like sport, issues like ch- ch- church is one of the most underrated thing, uh, un- underrated space that we need mm. to use to actually uh, affect uh, and impact our generation. It's not supposed to be even ba- be vulnerable. Exactly, yeah. most men they are most mostly open to learning when they are in church on Sunday than in, in other place. Mm. So mm. why not use that space as a pastor or as a leader? Use that space to address issues like gender-based violence. Mm-hmm. Use that space to, uh, to, 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 I mean, to, to raise awareness about other social matters. But we don't use that. We only narrow it to maybe just the Bible or only the you understand. So we mm-hmm. need to use those space, those spaces, social gatherings. I mean, sport, sport, sport clubs where we gather to watch sports and all. Those are the places where men are open. If you go to a place, where, if, if there is a soccer match playing, you you will see men hugging. <laughs> it's normally they, we normally say it's a taboo for men to hug. I tell you, normal, you, go. Hey, men even kiss each other and like with those things. I come attached, from a basketball. Exactly. I come from a basketball world where <laughs> even exactly. you'd, you'd score a goal and they would come and spank you and it's exactly. normal. But do that after the game and is and like, no, what are you doing? No things attached. It's just normal. Exactly. It's the culture. Why? Because men are more open. That it is a safe space. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. So, the, who wears the pants? Um. 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 um can I toss it on your side first, um, okay. Mapula? Um, how important it is for a woman, mm-hmm. you are one of the strong personality willed women I yeah. know, you know, um, you come with opinions for days, <laughs> you know. Um, when put on the pulpit, you can equally match, you know, in as far as delivering content is content, mm-hmm. you are well informed, you are highly opinionated mm-hmm. um, how, 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 how important is it for a woman with such qualities to, to uh, appreciate mm-hmm. and acknowledge authority yeah. such that it's easy for you to submit without feeling like there's power that is taken out from you uh-huh. I always say freedom is everything and so are the responsibilities that come with it mm. and that is what I found in our home That is what I found in my husband. Um, But mostly, I think it starts with the guy being very content with himself Mm -hmm. that he's able to just let you fly. Because if my husband was not content with himself, I wouldn't be flying the way that I'm flying. So he's able to allow me the freedom to do whatever that I put my mind to because he's not shaken, he's not challenged, and he does not, does not feel inferior. No, he does not feel inferior at, your at great, all. By your greatness. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. So I think that that is, for me, it's very... I always tell people that if your husband buys into the vision that you have, that is the most important thing that you need. That is the most um, special thing that you can ever have. Because if then he doesn't buy into anything, you are gone. It, 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 is, it is interesting you say that because yeah. a, a, whole lot of, a whole lot of women with world changing dreams yeah. tend to perish because now you're a wife now you're a mummy yes. and you have a husband that will always remind you yes. of that and place wants and, 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 and wants to box you and make you forget of 
the person that you were when you were 15 before he came to the picture, uh-huh. you know. Uh-huh. Uh, how can you appeal to such a woman to fight for that without using much strength? You know, yeah, or yeah. trying to overstep somebody else's boundaries or territories or whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay, for me also it's issues of confidence, right? Mm. Um, there's, I always say, Patrick, he, there's a lot of guys with low self-esteem. And because of Patrick, he, it gave them Leeway. power. Mm. Yeah, that it wasn't that wasn't there. Confidence, a fake confidence of some sort. And they also had the pass to now cement that. Mm-hmm. So now, there's more issues of confidence that we need to bring in in the boy child. So mm-hmm. that the boy child understands himself his, his first. Himself first, yeah. You know? And, and then, his place in society. Exactly. And then with ladies, I always tell them, one of the things you yeah, 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 I support that, no? But also, we need to understand um, roles. Mm. That whether this guy has money or does not have money is as wise as you think, or is not as or wise you as you think. Wiser you are, than yes. him. Sometimes you think you are wiser than him, ne? but there is a responsibility that he has, and he, that does not change. Mm. So we submit to not what 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 happens, but we submit to a principle. Mm. So there's a principle. Therefore, this guy remains the head. Whether you are wiser or not, this, this guy remains the head. And I think for me, this is what I would submit to ladies, that also when you get into relationships, when you get into marriage, it's a decision. Mm. So you decide, am I going to submit to this? Whether this is going to change tomorrow or this will stay the same, whether it's going to be great or it's going to uh, be less greater than it is now, I'm going to submit to this. So it's more of a decision more than anything else. Mr. Lohod, what are the right ways of wearing the pants? <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> wearing the pants, it's, um, it's, the book is all about whoever is willing to do more work for the family. Mm. Not work necessarily like your, your day job or whatever, mm. but whoever is willing to, to work on the relationship, effort. yes. Mm. Whoever is willing to put more effort is the one that wears the pants. Mm. You understand? Mm. So, the right way to do that is that, um, as my wife already said, we, we need to trust one another. I need to trust that whatever decisions that you are taking is for our benefit. Whatever then mm. the same way, whatever decisions that I'm taking is for our benefit. Mm. If we allow each other in that way to actually even individually together, though individually, mm. I, I don't know if it's English, they yeah. are together but if uh, separately. That makes sense. Together but separately. Mm. Doing our own things but with the agenda of putting of, of taking of together moving the family forward. Yeah. Mm. We need to allow that. You understand that's mm. where it depends. So most people are are actually I don't know why they are scared to allow their partners to actually do other things separately, you know, even though it's for the benefit of the family. You know, they, they actually, I don't know why people are afraid of that. I don't know. Maybe most men are, are afraid of losing control because we are taught as a man you need to have control. Mm. Look, um, for me, I think control it's uh, it's very inferior to to honor. You know, mm. to mm. honor. Honor for me is important. I I I'm ra- I I'd rather be honored by my wife. Than fear, fear that yeah. I'm in control of her, you yeah. understand? Mm. Because control also goes with fear, you understand? Yeah. So if you are controlling somebody, control uh, the, the, the transaction, your control. Or if, if I'm exercising control, you must you, you must show the fear, you understand? You must show that you are scared. Then I know that yes, my control is working. But with honor, is that um, even though we can disagree, you disagree. She disagrees, knowing knowing very well that I'm disagreeing, not because. I don't respect you. I'm disagreeing because what you are saying is not beneficial for us. Mm. You understand? So Linda, I know that she's saying she's disagreeing with honor. You understand? She's disagreeing for our good, not necessarily to prove her point. So I will say, wearing the pens is understanding that whatever the next uh, the other party is doing, that your partner is doing, is for your good as a as a couple, not uh, just for selfish reasons. So that's what wearing the pens is all about. Also. While we're still talking about wearing the pants, um, in my thinking, it, it amongst other things, it entails that uh, it, it, it cuts deep or cuts across or deals with, amongst other things, 
cultural systems, yeah. traditional systems, yeah. societal systems, family system, and all of that. Um, you have a way that you were brought up, and it's different, definitely yes. different from yeah. her ways, mm. how she was brought up. She could have been brought up in a family that allowed her the freedom to be. Yeah. You were brought up in a family perhaps that suppressed, you know, your female sisters. Yeah. Female sisters, is it this female brothers? <laughs> but yeah, that suppressed your sisters yeah. from the freedom of being. You know, it, it's seen even how a boy child and a girl child is raised. Um, five o'clock, it's a curfew. Yes. All the girl children must be in the house at mm-hmm. five. But yeah. boys are given leverage until six, seven or so. Yeah. Or just be back yeah. safe and alive type yeah. of a thing. Yeah. So what are some of the cultural, traditional, societal norms and systems that um, do you, in your opinion, think, and perhaps you can also even weigh in on that and, and add on, on his response, mm-hmm. that you think needs to be dealt with so as to bring out a man who can wear pants the right way. Yeah. Um, one, one important thing is um, the issue of, um, we like it or not, to be deeper, and we do have men who are sensitive, more sensitive than women. We like it or not, and they are still men. You are confusing just... me. I'm not sure which one am I, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, like little things. There are certain men, uh, there are certain, I'm a pastor also, and I also do counsel uh, couples. Mm. Somebody can come to you saying, hey, my pastor, my, my wife disrespects me. You understand? These other days, she said one, two, three, and when I tried to show her the way, she said this to me, and it hurt me so much, and you understand? So the guy is crying, coming to you crying, and you're thinking, but was was she wrong to actually challenge that, that point? He will say, no, she wasn't wrong, but, you know, I don't like the way she speaks to me. You understand? Mm. So for me, if I may use the example between me and my wife, you, I mean, I, luckily for me, is that I knew her, we were friends before we actually got into a relationship. Okay. So, okay. so, isn't it? <laughs> no, it works. It works. So, like I knew, my system, exactly. exactly. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> so, I knew the type of person she is. So, my wife is a person of opinions. You know what I'm So, and if she wants to, to, to validate her point, she has to change the tone also. You know what I'm so if somebody speaks with you with a different tone, it's not like she's disrespecting you, mm. but only if you know what type of person your wife is, you understand? So if you don't know what type of person your wife is, if she changes tone, automatically you're, you're saying, ah, she's disrespecting me. You're calling and you home. miss out on the content. Yes, you're calling home, you're calling home, but you're calling your I think you should organize a meeting with the uncles. You she's not raised well. <laughs> exactly, you understand? But if you know, you know very well that even if she's not talking to you, but talking to other people, if she wants her points to be heard, she has to raise her tone. That's the that's her personality. Mm. Then when she does that with you, you're okay. You're okay with it. You don't feel like, oh, okay, to them disrespected, you understand? Mm. So those those are some of the cultural things that we need to deal with. That women, uh, we know that women were not supposed to talk back to their husband culturally, mm. you understand? But it's different now. You when It was more a yes sir, you yes, yes sir yeah. type of exactly. basis. You know, I, and I, I love culture, I love tradition so much because it gives us morals and all that. But people need to learn. And learn. I always tell my wife when people want to get married at our church, when they say, you know, we want to do traditional wedding first and we do want to. Tra-. And I always ask them, do you exactly know what is your tradition when, if you say you want to do a traditional mm. wedding first? And the demands of the tradition. Our generation well. likes this issue of traditional weddings, but they don't even know. I'm not advocating for white weddings either, anyway. I'm not a fan either. But what I'm saying is that you are people like doing these so called traditional weddings while they don't even know their traditions themselves. What it entails, yeah. Hence, during our weddings, especially as black, as, as, as black people, our parents and family and relatives they hijack our weddings because we are doing something that we don't know. Mm-hmm. An uncle can come, a drunkard uncle can come from nowhere and say, according to Lodi culture, we must kill a coach that has a green tongue. You understand? <laughs> So the wedding can stop because we are going because to search for a coat with a green tongue. Mm. Yeah, and so I always tell them that we, we must stop saying tradition and tradition according to tradition. While we don't, even, we have never even researched. While we don't even know about that. So those are those, that's uh, one of the things. Secondly, and on uh, the other point that, which is important is when coming to uh, stewardship in the family. Sometimes we are we we know we grew up knowing that women when come to money, hey, they spend, hey, they go to, but that is not entirely true. There are certain couples which I've met, a lot of them, 
whereby the wife is more uh, shrewd when coming to money management mm. than the husband. So traditionally, the man wants to take decisions on money because women will waste your money with shopping. Mm. But what if the man is the one? I mean, I know, <laughs> I know, husband, what are the like uh, a lot. they a lot. budget. That, that, that is true. They budget for clothes more than any other thing. You mm. understand? So, in that case, if your wife is what simply simple things that like if your wife is more skilled or better in a certain role in the family, Let never lead default it. to traditional mm. roles or say no. This mm. is the role of a man. Mm. You understand? If, let her lead. I always give an example with me and my wife that I don't know graphic design. She 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 has done graphic design. She has been doing for years. If there is a graphic designing need to be done in the family, who should do it? Who should? She should it? wear the pants. You understand? In that she department. must wear the pants. Yeah. So the book. Wow, interesting, interesting. I I love I love what you just illustrated there, and perhaps you can also add on that one. That wearing the pants, it's it's not a societal and traditional cultural. Um, perspective, but it is more on the natural things, gifts that one possesses that can better advance a family. Interesting? Mm -hmm. Look, also it, it's, I think um, the fact that a girl child was never allowed to make a decision what I call risky play what I call risky play, eh? was never allowed to make a decision from a place of confidence from a place of I don't want to do this. Mm. Um, a, a boy child, let's say for example, and a boy child goes running on the tree, like you gave an example of curfews and mm. stuff like that. So girl children were never afforded. Fear mm. was, was given, was implanted. It was imposed, yeah. yeah. Imposed on mm. them, right? Mm. Uh, from a young age and they grow with that. That they become feeling inferior, mad, yes, submissive. feeling inferior. That I can't do this, mm. I can't push hard enough, uh, because these things are for certain people. These things are for boys. Things, these things are for men. So that's why we have that. So boys think, look, everything is for us, mm. and then the girl child now must doubt the things that have she can do, in have place in society, mm. and that's why uh, what he was talking about of. Now knowing what you can do, what you can't do, how do we come together and help one another? And who wears the pants in which area, in which uh, thing? And then we, we grow the family nicely. If I, we are I, able I, love, to I, love, I love this concept, who wears the pants? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and how it is, it can be a multifaceted concept that is, is applied on various things within a household yes. setting. Uh -huh. um, I mean, young parents as you guys are, um, with the parenting skills that you exposed to from 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 by your parents and yeah. all of that, and you've seen how things are done. Um, to a lot of people, it doesn't make sense that. I mean, people fight over small things like, um, I want my kids to speak English, and oh, other yeah. ones says, um, <laughs> I want them to speak my mother language, and all of that. Yeah. How how important is it as a couple, you know, mm. for the better benefit of the kids that you. You were the other side of the pen, and then he was the other side. And but the idea being to to create synergy, um, or, or, and and bring about uniformity mm -hmm. in a common parental system as opposed to a divided one. Yeah. I yeah. think okay. Okay. Uh, so, I, I love that. So <laughs> <laughs> that. <laughs> it's it's very important. I what 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 I've seen is that. What I think we owe our children, our children, especially the children that we are raising today, mm -hmm. they need to grow up seeing both mommy and daddy being active yeah. in the family. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that they, they, necess they, they, especially from a young age, they don't actually automatically say, oh yeah, that one is the boss of the family. Yeah. You understand? Because I think we, we grow up with wrong mentalities that somebody is the boss in the family mm -hmm. and another one is a servant. That is why if you see your dad beating your mom, it was okay because yeah. the dad has boss. been the boss from the beginning. But in, in our generation, I think it's good for children to grow up seeing that both of them, they're actually pulling their weight. All of them are actually doing something for the family. Yeah. And it, it, it is okay for, a, for, for, for my boy to idolize his mom. You understand? Mm -hmm. It is okay if he idolizes, he idolizes me. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that he mustn't think of, I know families, I mean, I know families whereby boys are, are embarrassed are embarrassed of their mothers because you know my mom the only thing that she knows is to cook and keep quiet when daddy's drunk and beating her up she's mm. to just keep quiet so boys are embarrassed of their mothers you understand 
That is why boys will also call their fathers. When, whenever it's school, they say bring your parents. They want to call their fathers because yeah, the fathers they hear. You understand? Mm. So I think what we need to do to our children today is to raise them, seeing both parents, you know, le- having leading roles. In, in the family yeah. for their own good. I think that's the best thing that we can give to our children. And I think also, for like, we have a five-year-old, and we've seen that with him, that we, he's, he just watches. Because someone was saying kids kids don't listen, they actually watch. Mm. And that, that we've seen it with uh, uh, Shiloh, because um, he decides which language he wants to speak. And we've allowed him that space to say, Nana, if you want to speak English, it's okay. Onyagobulana's baby is also okay. And you also see how he chooses to, or which language is he going to speak when. He knows when he's going to do it. And that also comes in being real. Mm. I think what we've established in our home is be real. Mm. And that's what the kids will pick up. That mm. they, that we are real here. Everything is as real as it comes. And they're able to give... Well, the kids now, yo... They see and they see beyond what you want them to see. That's true. Because they're very smart. So when you allow them a real space, that real space allows them to choose and see what. Okay, this is how our family works, and then they are able to now find their their place in the setup, and then we all work in synergy. And it so becomes amazing. Within the church side, mm-hmm. now that you, you guys lead um, a, a church as well. Yeah. And um, we grew up knowing Muruti and Ma Muruti. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and that, amongst other things, is a woman finds definition, societal definition, from the husband. Yeah. And, and, and it, it's been a thing within the church um, 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 community that women with gifts, you know, God gives them gifts and all these things, but because the husband may not be the defining factor of that woman yes. um, tends to also suppress on the gift on its own. Mm-hmm. How, how easy is it for you to just let your wife be in the church and um, whether she's going to be gifted in an area that is viewed to be superior than yours and, and, and how important is it to, 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 to for, for, for men, men to just be okay with the fact that um, and I know of one woman one woman who, who was a founder of a church and the husband was neither a pastor, neither leading what not, but the husband supported that woman until actually they, they, they passed on on the same day, you know, from a, from a very tragic accident. Mm-hmm. But that woman would make church-based decisions and would come back and say, I heard God say, at the time the husband heard absolutely nothing. Yeah. But <laughs> we've seen how supportive and submissive this husband was to the authority, you know, from a from a from a spiritual leader point of view, or do we call them that? Yeah, a spiritual leader point of view, and not frown on the gift as well. Yeah, um, look, fortunately for us, um, we are blessed to 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 be running a different type of ministry, uh, whereby we allow every church member to participate, where, whereby we allow every church member to actually utilize their God-given gifts in the church, so it becomes mm. more easier. In fact, from the, the church that we are leading in Polugan, we have more women who are participating in leadership roles than, than men in our church. You understand? Also, in terms of the ministry of the way, we have more women in that regard. So it's easier for me and also for my wife to actually allow her also and actually to, to be herself even in church, to, to be who God wants her to be. I mean, that's what the Bible always says regarding uh, participation in the church, you understand? I know people will have a, a, a different traditional understanding of the verse which limits, which says women must keep quiet, but we are not here on biblical context and other things. <laughs> that will be a topic for another day yeah. or for other people to, to deal with it, but you, you understand? So anyone, who's, who, anyone who has given himself time to read the, the whole Bible will know and understand that actually the Bible gives freedom to women to express themselves even in the church. Mm-hmm. Women can also lead in the church. So in our church, we we were blessed that we, we created an environment whereby not only pastors can lead, but everyone else can actually participate. So for my wife to actually be active in the church, it became easier, you understand, whereby she can take a lead and we can all follow, you understand? Mm-hmm. 
So and even if even if she give she gives me counsel, I mean separately or individually in private, I can still take the counsel because not only do I trust her as my wife, I also trust the God in her, you know, and I respect mm. the God. So for me it is all about the God that is in her and I respect that. Mm-hmm. Look, I think I always tell people that war mamu do when she were depressed. Also because if he does not then you are not. Because sometimes it's because you've got a gift, right? Mm. But um for the people to take you serious you need val- it almost like you need validation from your exactly. husband. Exactly. Even if it's not validation, but he has the to nudge, recognize nudge, exactly. the recognition, <laughs> affirmation. <laughs> affirmation. Yeah, mm. And if he doesn't affirm that, Luana sometimes you doubt. Mm. Because sometimes you might find or you also let's say I have not really found my feet mm. as to issues of calling and stuff. But if he comes and affirms, mm. it becomes easier for me to and even... And encourages you to even make exact, mistakes. Yes. Make mistakes, go on to learn more. And, and because issues of the word and growing uh, in, in issues of gifts, you need to do it and learn and learn and learn. But now, if you don't have affirmation, then it becomes a challenge. And like, like it or not, we need the affirmation. It, because it, it's you can't. a natural feeling. It's a natural it's feeling. It's a natural demand natural, feeling of some sort, yeah. Exactly, because we can't use... Woman, especially him for married women. <laughs> I want a single one's affirmation from whom, mm. you know? But now, you are with this person, and if this person does not affirm that, even if you try harder, you'll be great outside, but you'll get into the house and it's going to die off. Important point you mentioned there when you when you bring about a difference between um, how single women... Yeah almost do not need affirmation for them to thrive. And yes. because they there is not such no. a demand upon them, yes. they, they can excel and when they make mistakes, it's okay. Yes. But with married women, there's that thing that um, there is an authoritative voice above you such that whatever yes. it actually it says, it can become law and create a reality for you, a reality that can either suppress you or that can encourage you to just flourish going forward. Yes. How important is it for... For men, from a creational um, status, from a creational posture, um, to with, with the authority that has been just, you know, bestowed upon them by God, mm. you know, how important is it for men to use even such authority when it comes to, you know, household issues with their wives, with their kids, and so forth? Uh, it is very important um, in a sense that the the authority has never the authority is not God has not given men authority as a leader in the house. Only to for 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 actually for limitations for limiting the wife authority authority is also given to give somebody freedom to do other things you mm. understand so as a man you are not given authority to say you can't do this only use the same authority to also say do that if you want you can do that if you want you can do that you understand mm. give use your authority wisely I think we I think maybe that's a problem especially in, in with world leadership uh, altogether that. When people are in power, they assume their power is to limit others' power, uh, powers of uh, of others. Mm. You understand? Automatically, they think if I'm in power, I cannot allow anyone to exceed certain limits. Mm. So I must set boundaries on people to show that I'm in power. I think that's the confusion that that we have as far as leadership globally. So as a man in the house, your authority is not for you to set boundaries. Your authority is also there to open boundaries. You know, for everyone who's under your care, if I may put it that way, mm. is to say to your under ch- your leadership. Yeah. Exactly. You mm. understand? Is to say, my wife, you can actually you can do all things. So basically Christ. you can lead from the front but being at the back. Yeah. Exactly. Not you being understand? the main man. Yeah. We, we, mm. which, which is the best way, you understand? You can do all things. You need to say to your children, you can do you can become all you can all you can. We wherever you want to be on this earth, whatever you put your mind uh, on, on this earth, you can actually achieve. Let your authority open doors only. Let also, your authority must not be there to close doors. Say no, this is wrong. This is wrong. Mm. You can't do this. You understand? Mm. We need to actually be able to open those. Uh, use our authority also to do what to empower and also to ensure that we get people progress to the next level. And you know what? The way God has created the world, it's so interesting that God can use your authority actually to to, to make somebody to be even better than you. Mm. I mean, and you should be okay. Yeah. Uh, it's there. It's there. <laughs> We are always, since you are on a church topic, uh, I always quote the scripture of Jesus and, and, and the man called John the Baptist in the Bible. 
John the Baptist was the authority, was the leader during his time, yeah. was the man, was the prophet of the town until Jesus came. A trusted came. voice. Exactly. He used his authority to announce Jesus. When Jesus came, the following day, John, John the Baptist's ministry ended. Mm. People left him. Interesting. You understand? People left him. Interesting. But he's the one who was who had the authority to announce this guy. Imagine you're introducing a new kid. At some point, even said to some, follow him. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> new kid on the blog, you're announcing mm. him. On Twitter or on social media, I say, guys, check out this guy. The following day, this guy is taking. And this all could your be followers. same, same, same quality traits that could be, exactly. you know, transferred within a marital setting. Where the wife, husband says, you know what, she for this is her season. I'm, a, I'm a recognizing exactly. that this is her season. She's got so much grace to lead us into a new place, and it should be okay for a husband exactly. to to get to a place where you were not the leader. Exactly. Yeah. You understand? Mm. And there are certain there are certain places that you can reach as a husband or as a human being and but the next person can reach so there are certain places whereby you are dreaming to reach uh, in the future and, and she can be the one to, to reach, but the, she can, she can be the one required to wear the pants to take you there exactly some husbands they they will actually be taken to the lord and go and rest with the lord without achieving certain dreams which they could have achieved even in their first years of marriage if they could have if just allowed their wives yeah, power understand? sharing mm. so that's the thing yeah your take look Let's allow each other to fly. Let's allow each other. More importantly, confidence. I always stress issue your confidence. Right? Because if we like, when you are confident enough, it's easier to let someone fly. Mm. Because like you were saying on, uh, you could have established, uh, accomplished certain things earlier if you allowed someone to just lead. It's because sometimes, because you are not confident enough in your, in, skin, in your yes. own skin. So when someone says, look, I, I think this, this this way, let's take this way, you're thinking, no, that it's me who's supposed because I, to... Yeah, I did not bring the suggestion. Exactly. Therefore, so if you don't bring the suggestion to the table, then it's not a suggestion. So if, if we understand our self-worth, it's easier to take other people's opinion and then we run. So. With regards to the lead role, yeah. Ne? Um... I've learned this from, 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 from one of my uncles where, you know, you'd, you'd find these women who are just naturally insisting on everything, yeah. you know, I, I need to be part of this, yeah. this life-changing, global-changing yeah. happening. Yeah. And they want to lead yeah. without having the requisite skills to do so. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and my uncle would always say, you know what, with my wife, um, she has no let's say for example she has no clue of what driving is yeah. but she wants to be on this driver's, driver's side and actually drive and then you'd be like dude that's the wall in front of you with no driving skill mm -hmm. should you operate this machinery you're gonna crash yeah. you know yeah. and, 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 and I've seen how empowering it was for her to say okay I'm aware that you can't drive but yeah. drive yeah. she drives and then hits the wall yeah. He doesn't say, I told you, I told you that you, if you, you know. Yeah. He says, now that you've crashed, yeah. Yeah. how do we get out of this situation? Yeah. Yeah. How important is it for husbands with, with such a traditional and societal-based mentality that says, um, you have to be the one leading the whole time. And if she, because at times it's a trust issue, at times it's a confidence issue. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have confidence yeah. in the decision yeah. she makes. Yeah. Yeah. And you can foresee that... <laughs> This it's is so not gonna go and it's not gonna end well. How important is it to be okay that she has the trial and error, try and error type of a, a trial? And what are the most good ways of appealing to her not to suppress, to discourage, or rub, scrub, 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 scratch her out, but to also say, dude, you have committed a boo boo and you can commit as many boo boos as you can. I got your back. Uh, look, uh, I think the, the first thing that needs to be done which, uh, with husbands, especially, is that um, I've seen husbands, some husbands like to be heroes, Heroes, you know, they want to be celebrated in their families. Society uh, puts pressure at times. Yeah. So, in a, uh, to a point whereby some are, if they want to monopolize certain things, if I know how to do something, I want to keep it to myself so that she can forever depend on me regarding this thing. Because I want to be the hero. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So there are certain topics which they are they are, they are above her, her level. So I won't, I won't bring those topics when she's around, but I can talk about these topics even with other women at work. You mm -hmm. understand? So 
if you do that, you're automatically creating that uh, problem whereby but your wife will now be feel inferior, even to try... And you're creating a divide, divide like amongst other things, yeah. So I think the first thing that the hus- husbands need to do is that... It, it goes both ways, by the way. Uh, it, it's, it's not automatic that when we enter into a marriage, the husband will be superior in other things. Mm. You understand? Uh, I think God normally makes it... Uh, not necessarily 50-50, but God makes it in such a way that all of us, we are bringing something on the table. It's just we only recognize the one that the, the ones that the husband has. So I think the husband, the first thing that they need to do is that with whatever I have, whatever that I do regularly, especially the activities that I spend most of my time in, I need to bring her uh, on board, you understand? If I'm passionate about this particular thing, if I'm passionate about politics, uh, I need to bring in, not necessarily that she should be active, but she should just have a clue of what I'm doing, you understand? Mm. So that whenever, we, I, whatever that I'm doing is being mentioned, she can also participate in such a conversation or, or, or whatsoever. Mm. So if I can have that attitude that whatever that I do, she must have a clue of what I'm doing. The same with her. Whatever that she's doing, I might not be interested in it, but I must have a clue, you understand? So automatically then she knows that I, I value her input in whatever that I do. You know that most of the guys never they don't want to listen to their wives because they consider their wives inferior even in terms of logic and all stuff. All yeah. That. Yeah. And how many mistakes do men make? Hello. You understand? We make so many terrible mistakes. If we actually we could have listened to a certain voice that was was that that was just an orthodox because she was not speaking the language mm. of the comrades mm. that I hang out with, so mm. I did not take her voice seriously. But she could have a chance to... And women are women. Women, we always say they have the sixth sense. They see things that we do not see. You understand? Mm. Normally, if your wife warns you about something, uh, chief, it's likely it's true. <laughs> more, spe- more, important, more importantly, when regarding to the opposite sex, mm. you understand? If your wife doesn't like a particular person who always hangs around you, and you think, ah, oh, no, she's insecure, most of the time... Uh, most most of the times you'll find that eventually that particular person had interest in you and you never knew. So if we can develop that attitude as husband that whatever that I know, she must at least have no basic knowledge or basic uh, info regarding what I'm doing, then if she's more interested, we can now create a platform for her to be trained in that particular yeah. thing. And if she's not interested, it's fine, let her be, but at least she knows what I'm doing. She can chip in now and then. So it is important mm. for us to create that platform in the family. I think it also goes back to team playing. Mm. Team playing for victory for all of us. Because um, at the end of the day, whatever, my success is ours. His success is ours. And that's how so, we view you, by the way. We don't see Mapula, we don't see Mel, we exactly, see, you see the Lorodis. The Lorodis. Mm. Mm. So if the Lorodis are now able to play as a team, so like we would sit, whatever that I don't know, I'm like, Lavi, what do you think? Nana? And sometimes I bring that view as if it's my own. And But <laughs> this view is from this guy. So that's how it should work. It also issues whatever that we are interested in. Even if I don't know how that thing works, if he knows how it works, Eventually, I'll you be able know, to, to know, know how, how that it thing works. works. And, and it, it's like, sometimes we enter into spaces where he's more clued up. And for me, it has been amazing that I'm able to get into spaces that I don't really have much info. But as long as he's got the info, it's like outsourcing. I can have a company that designs, but I can't design. But if I know now who can design, I'll come to the you company as looks if I'm going to do this. Yeah. And I'm going to come and say... No, let's do one, two, three. So that's how it works as a, in a family setup that we are a team after all. So now, yeah. let's touch on on, on a, a woman who, in whose whom I believe you guys share common space. The yes. current Miss Universe was Um yes. She 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 appeals to a girl child to take up space. Yes. How, in your own opinion, how important is personal development mm-hmm. um, for 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 the girl child? Mm-hmm. Such as should she meet. Um, a very dominant male, you know, as a husband in the near future and whatnot, yeah. and she will still be able to take up a space, still be able to be a mom, mm-hmm. a wife, and all. How important is personal development is for the girl child, mm-hmm. you know, with regards to taking up space? Right now, it's the most important thing. I always say confidence allows you to sit in all spaces that you want to sit, and without confidence, you can't do anything. So, um, confidence says, I don't know it now, mm. but I want to know, and I'm going to learn it. Mm. Because sometimes we get into spaces that we don't really, we are not really, sometimes 
preparedness is, is important that you are prepared whenever you enter into something but you'll sometimes you'll never be prepared for everything that will come that's true and then but when you are intentional about being in that space you will learn and personal development becomes a bit easier because now i feel that i am um, personal development comes in you set t- tasks so that you are able to monitor your progress mm. but if you don't work you don't do anything then there's no development in whatever that you are doing so um but the excellence is developmental in its nature mm. so if you want to develop you need to now strive for excellence it means you work harder for you to then um see development in mm. your personal personally and in also projects that you you put yourself um uh, your mind into and on issues of uh, zozibini um look it was amazing it's amazing because i believe in most courses that she believes in that a girl child needs to take up spaces also why because she was not allowed the space and not that she can't society stripped it off from her societal norms so mm. it's important for us to break societal norms because um and not also because we are women but on merits so for me mm. it's important that you break the stereotypes on merits you sit on certain tables on merits not because you're going to play i am a woman card mm, i was uh, mm, underprivileged mm, mm. but you need to come to that point and that is also maybe a, a, a different topic the mentality that most black people have um yes. because i'm black i'm, I'm black, black. Exactly. i've been previously disadvantaged therefore no. mm. yeah so we don't come on merits and i think also it's because a lot of women we we disadvantage each other because of those things and those who have merits don't want to empower those without and they don't tell the truth to say look power is not given power is worked for mm. so what is important is for us to now when we are here um someone was saying yesterday that when when Zozi was speaking of cementing the the spaces that you were in what it, that really means is that you you cement when you cement now we laying it's a foundation mm. that when the next sister comes she's not starting from scratch she's now building but now wow. we I'm actually struggle to understand what that meant yeah. thank you <laughs> <laughs> so we are in spaces that we are not cementing so when i leave when i'm in office and when i leave office the the next person that comes into office starts from scratch so Because basically we are building anything. an entire empire without actually being you know in, active in terms of, yes team players yes wow. yes we don't want to leave a legacy for someone to build on to start us to fresh st- from everyone must start from cuz when you so basically when we're done building this thing when it stands we'll all see a reflection of yes. a collection yes. like collective as opposed to, wow yes. that's, that's that's how it should be and that's that's what leadership is about interesting so she she's the current reigning queen in Polokwane and and i believe part of her responsibilities were involved um her making some ground breaking decisions and so forth mm-hmm. and um which maybe sometimes she may not even bounce them off go away now and and because society says um she must get her final yeah, yeah, word yeah. from you <laughs> that 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 might yeah that might yeah, endorsement of some sort mm-hmm. that might be a bit challenging for other men um when 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 blessed with such a very powerful and very influential woman um who who can make decisions independent of you um how can you appeal to a husband and a boy child uh, who is aspiring to be a husband one day in that um and uh, with regards to the kind of women that you know life is throwing away these days um mm. we don't have those inferior minded people they they are here <laughs> yeah. because there's girl power and amongst other things at some point bad you turn about that story for another yeah. day <laughs> um how important is it for 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 a man to not feel challenged and made feel inferior um when when when, when you have such a woman who has such a high responsibility in society that perhaps you might view yourself to not have yeah i think what we need to teach our young boys especially those who want to get married is that um women are not uh, social projects you know and objects of yeah. mm-hmm. you, you don't marry somebody because you want to make her better <laughs> I, 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 yeah I motivational speaking sometimes that say you need to complement one another make each other better but we need to clarify that Uh, traditionally people you 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 they will tell you to go and marry 
Malkumalo's daughter because you can help her to go to school, you can do one, two, three, you understand? Mm. So we are no longer marrying under such circumstances, mm. you understand? So you need to marry somebody who actually you love them for who they are, mm. not necessarily what you can make them to be, mm. you understand? I think the reason why most today, uh, generally, if you check your um, the stats, that uh, uh, marriage statistic, people are, uh, I mean, the, the rate of marriage is declining. Very few people are getting married these days. And those years. who do actually divorce, the, uh, it, it, in the, the, yeah, in the most it, shocking, it, yeah. You know why? Because we have all these young men who were brainwashed, uh, not necessarily brainwashed, but who were taught traditionally about how to 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 to, to select a wife and how to lead a family. As, to, as there's an empire. According to yes, according to the to the context of 1960. And this young man is taking 1960 wisdom, which was the finest wisdom on earth. Mm. He's applying it in 2019. You understand? So, the only problem is that... There's a systematic contention, obviously, there. Exactly. Mm. And a lot has happened throughout the decades. You mm. understand? So, hence, there are they clashes, and men are, are believing that women are disrespectful these days. They, they say, yeah, this feminist generation, they are just... Uh, uh, insulting one to it's because <laughs> men men are not prepared honestly hence we wrote the book who has the pen mm-hmm. who has the pens talks about 14 types of husbands uh, that we have these 14 mm-hmm. types of husbands who are not actually ready for marriage we need to help we need to deal with them we need oh, to oh, help what are them. some of those um, 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 <laughs> you know, qualities in this <laughs> of those 14 the, husbands okay, the funny one that I always talk about is uh, Mr. MBA I call him Mr. MBA MBA is then standing for married but available. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That you have this MBA. I thought the actual master's in business administration. Oh, yeah. no. So you find this type of men who are actually married but they are also available. Why? These are men with unfulfilled fantasies. Mm. You understand? Mm. So somebody got married because uh, everyone is getting married. I'm thirty. If I'm 30 years old, yo, my time is past. I must just mm. marry. I'm married, but I had this fantasies, you know. Uh, I, I was laughing with my wife saying, we need to address this issue of black people when they succeed, they want to marry the other race. You understand? We assume. Leave we, us alone. Yes. <laughs> Leave us oh. alone. <laughs> yes, so many, yes, I'm, look, uh, I'm not a racist, I'm not discriminating, <laughs> but I think people should become us better. Alone. Achievement. Marrying, some, marrying, marrying into a certain race is not an achievement, please. You understand? Hey, MBA? But, <laughs> so you find that somebody wanted to date a, 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 white, a white girl, to, I mean, for example, and then it never happened, like it was a dream. Then you got married to this young black baby. Okay, I had that dream since I was four. Don't change my life. Yeah. <laughs> then, I'm, then, I'm you. then you marry this young, beautiful black girl who's powerful and all this. But you you live at at home because you, you recently just found a work colleague who's white who likes you and you think, oh God, is this you? You understand? You think maybe God is actually your dreams are coming through. Let me you know why I'm not married. Thank you. Because I'm waiting for my white wife. <laughs> yeah. So the book addresses such kind. Interesting. But there are other things also. There are other types of husband. 14 all, 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 all together. So it is just to prepare guys that uh, look, women are not social projects. So we, we we don't marry today. We don't marry so that we can take care of women, so that we can take them to school. So that uh-uh, uh-uh. we are actually it's a it's a it's a it's a coming together now. Yeah. It's like uh, two equals coming together, and by the order of God, one of them will take will just take the lead, the leading role as a husband. But these are two equals. Yeah. You understand? Mm. We come with we, we are just equal. You are you just have that. We just have that. Uh, Added advantages mean that because marriage is a courtly institution, so it's governed by mm, God. So mm. God laid down the principle of men being the leader. Mm. You understand? Mm. But we are equals. That's the important thing. You are not here to have a CSI uh, kind of a thing whereby you are here. You, you are taking pictures that look today. I took my husband, my wife to school. She's graduating today. Uh, I, I, I've been there for my wife. Her business is doing well because I supported it. No, that's not what the mm. husband's role is today. You understand? Mm. So we need we need to change that mindset. I think that's what frustrates most uh, young boys. That's how mm. most young boys are afraid to marry because whoever they meet there is just a strong opinionated person, and then they're wondering, yeah, man, where is that wife that my uncle and my grandfather told me about? <laughs> 
the one mm. who every time when I come back, she will just sit next to me and say, "Are you hungry? Do you want beer? Do you want food? Do you understand?" They are they are wondering, but they forget that the, the wives that they are married today, your uncles who told you those things, they forget that you are going to marry someone who will even work more shifts than you. Yeah. When she's yeah. come, when she comes back for double shifts, she's tired, and probably yeah. you have been doing office work, you have been sitting on the desk the whole day. What if your wife is a is a civil engineer somewhere or as a quantity surveyor somewhere was busy was on the in road the throughout the day you understand when mm. she comes back she's more tired than you you can't that expect is, that, is, that, is, that is that is natural knowledge you understand yeah. so common sense you understand so but then who should do what when she comes back i mean if you were to use common sense if she's that tired who should do what who should be running around you have two or three kids who should ensure that all of the kids uh, have bathed and have bathed eaten, and have eaten and all that they've done the, uh, their homeworks if our our education system is still using homework? It's a little bit limping, you but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So it's important that we get our young boys and yeah. young men today uh, up to date with that things have changed. You are still a leader, but in which context? Mm. Mm. I always tell when I do competence coaching sessions at school, I tell the boy child that you're actually in trouble if you're not going to change your mindset because now you've got a more confident girl, you've got a more stronger girl. Defined you've girl. got Exactly. And now our government system are even empowering her more. She's got more opportunities than uh, you as a boy child because now it's like they're trying to balance the scale. Mm. And, and if you are sitting with a boy, the girl has a point um, higher than a boy. But also, now, the boy children need we need to, as parents right now we need to prepare them now that it's changing society is changing and probably by the time they get to a place where they want to marry it would have even changed more because of how society is now all the seasons that we're living in is so the our kids need to understand that the girl child is growing but at the same time the girl child needs to understand that we are equals but in a in a we are equals, but this guy, if you are married, this guy will forever... We are equal, a, but yeah. with different roles. Yes, yes, mm. exactly. So, um, but now the boy child needs to, because of societal norms and the background that we all have, culture and everything, the boy child needs to adjust his mind more than the girl child. Now, just before we take a, 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 a quick song while we find out... Um, uh, in case you're still wondering, this is TUT <laughs> FM 96.2. Um, because of load shedding, we have the network um, at this hour that it's usually not on. And um, and I'm and I'm not hoping to search one because probably you, you don't know who this guy is by now. Um, Marvin is still on his way, and you guys are gonna be um, still taking part in uh, uh, what do you guys call it? The evening cruise. Uh, I know by now you probably. And lines are open for, for those who are single and are looking and, and whatnot. Oh. He's coming for all of that. Wait a bit on that. Just before we take a song and establish where, where Marvin is, I'm sure his listeners are missing him. They're wondering, who is this guy? <laughs> but I hope they're learning a thing or two. Uh-huh. Um, with, with power comes influence and, mm-hmm. and greater responsibility. Mm-hmm. Um, during your reign as the current Mrs. Polukwane, um, what are some of the societal ills that you wish to curb mm-hmm. um, um, before you hand over the crown to the next phenomenal woman that you see happening and, 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 and things that you not only want to be remembered for? Uh-huh. Um, I mean, because a lot of people, they, they come in such places to, you know, they, there's a statue there, I'm a pool, all yeah. of a sudden, it's there, everybody must just go <laughs> kiss it every now and then before yeah. they do whatever. But what are some of the most longevity-based kind of things you'd want mm-hmm. to see? Some of this qualities that you'd want to leave with this women mm-hmm. um, as you would be because right now everybody's looking at you like okay what yeah, is he gonna, what do? gonna do yeah <laughs> so what is important for me right now it's firstly changing the narrative of pageants to say pageants are not just beauty about beauty queens hey 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 but it's about community work mm. and you do not win pageants by just being a good model you win pageants by being confident, by intentionally being a community worker. Being selfless. Yes, selfless. So, what? firstly, what I want to do is, I want, I was telling them that the finalists that we are going to get in 2020 are going to be hard workers. If you don't want to work, don't even enter for Mrs. Polokwane. 
because mm. we are going to have people who are serving the community. Get their hands dirty. Yes, people who are willing to do that. And and for me, firstly, it will be that, and then it will be issues of education. I want to leave having, you know, our finalists must get out of the program having been empowered. I'll tell you, Mamuru, to what guys, I want you guys to enter. Even if you don't win it, don't come in there because with a the mentality. Because there's a lot of benefits exactly. to it. Exactly. Yeah. You will grow because this will teach you how to be a stronger person. Because now we are leading churches. We are leading people. And as, as, a, as a reigning queen, you are leading people. And you need to... Impact comes with hard work. Mm. And people sometimes... I tell people, pe- people feed from your passion. And from your hard work. Mm. So when they see you passionate about something, when they see you intentional about something... And that can actually even redirect their paths and passions and dreams. Exactly. So those are the things that we want to establish, to say issues of education, issues of leadership. Then we are able to have... You know when people are confidently empowered, they are able to make influence in any sphere that they want to. So if we get them to be in a position where... Confidence is a is, is is not negotiable, you know. Mm. And then hard work is in their minds, is in whatever they they want to do. Then they're able to push in in every sphere that they want to push. All right, let's just take a quick song, and um, we we will soon wrap up this because you guys still have to drive all the way to Polokwane. <laughs> if you are out there listening, I'm, I think I'm appealing to over seventy thousand plus listeners out there. These people drove all the way for Poluka to just <laughs> share with you this wisdom, and I cannot be grateful enough. Let's just take a song. Um, I think it is more relevant to, to the conversation that we're having. Okay. Sam Cook, he says, change is going to come. Really? I love the song because it says, I was born by the river in a little tent, mm-hmm. but, not, but it described a very sad background that, you know, there were certain systems that deprived us mm-hmm. some of the opportunities that we now have, mm-hmm. and there's still hope for the boy child, there's still hope for the girl child, and they can equally wear the same pants at the same time. Yeah. 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 Change is going to come. Sam Cook, enjoy, 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 and we'll be back straight after it. That speaker's not crying, but in my ear it is. Oh, <laughs> The mics were on, so they, they had me. 